Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special Coaches Roundtable from College Hockey, Inc. I'm Nate Ewell from College Hockey, Inc., and I'm joined by three coaches who are members of our board of directors, Derek Schooley, the head coach at Robert Morris, Ben Gite, the associate head coach at the University of Maine, and Leon Hayward, the assistant coach at Colorado College. Gentlemen, welcome. Obviously, we're all living through an unprecedented time here. We've gotten very comfortable with this Zoom technology as the pandemic seems to have impacted every facet of, our, of life. And, uh, and that includes college hockey recruiting, as you guys know. That's what we're gonna cover today. We're, uh, we're currently in what the NCAA calls a dead period for recruiting, which extends through August and could even go longer than that. Derek, I'll start with you. What are some things that a coach can't do in terms of recruiting during a dead period? Well, I think the main thing is we can't be on the road watching uh, prospects in action. Uh, there's some, obviously, you, you're able to, to do uh, phone calls, texts, emails, all that kind of uh, stuff. But to be able to actually be in a rink and watch somebody play in a summer hockey showcase or, or anything like that is, is something that uh, we're not able to do at this point. And Ben, uh, also not able to have kids on campus to, to visit? No, that's right. I mean, um, you know, we, we can't have, like, like you mentioned in your emails, like we can't have on or off campus contact with these recruits. So, uh, you know, I can't drive to somebody's house, even if I'm not watching hockey, to, to meet with them and their family. And they, they, certain, they can't come to us and visit campus and talk with the coaches. As, as Derek said, uh, Leon, there, there are some permissible ways of communication in terms of uh, recruiting during this dead period. Can you go over some of those? Yeah, we've done uh, phone calls. Obviously, we, we continue to do those things, but also uh, uh, we will also have Zoom meetings and Zoom presentations that we're allowed to do as well um, with, with uh, prospective uh, student athletes. And uh, those are some of the things we've been trying to do. Obviously, a lot of schools have their uh, tours online and um, you know, things like that, campus tours, campus videos, so those are the ways we've really tried to stay connected with recruits. It's probably important to note that uh, coaches can do one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls with recruits, but not group. So you can't uh, do a Zoom call with a team or, or groups of prospective student athletes. But, uh, but there is at least opportunity for communication. Yeah. Derek, even though you guys are restricted from going to, to any of these events. Hockey's starting to be played again at camps and showcases and junior team tryouts. What advice would you give to players participating in those, even though you guys as recruiters won't be there watching? Well, that's the, the beauty of things right now. We are able to watch via internet and via uh, different things like, uh, like we're doing right now, whether it's through Facebook Live whether it's through hockey TV, whether it's through Live Barn, we are able to watch. Um, it's just you gotta you gotta pick and choose what you're doing, and when you do, you gotta make sure that uh, it's it's something that you're you're playing with high level prospects, you're playing with good uh, players on the ice, and uh, making sure that uh, you use this time wisely as development time, because once uh, seasons are started back up, we are going to come out, we are going to be able to watch on on, uh, on the internet. We're, you know, I think uh, hockey TV and, and those subscription base are probably going to get a lot of money from college hockey coaches uh, once their season starts. So I think it's something that uh, you have to make sure that uh, you're prepared for the season, but you also got to make sure that uh, you're doing the right things in the summer because there are a lot of things going on that uh, we probably won't see or we won't be able to do and uh, won't be able to see live barn or anything like that. So. I think just be pick, uh, be picky with what uh, you do in the summer and use this time for skill development. Ben or Leon, anything you guys would add to that? I mean, if you're going to participate in a showcase or, you know, right now there's some USHL tryouts going on. Uh, other junior leagues are having their tryouts. I mean, it's, it's more the same, you know. <laughs> you know, if we're watching, we're watching for some, some good players, guys that compete. Uh, you know, you bet that just what you show on, on, on video is not what we're just going to rely on. We're going to be calling coaches and everything else. Uh, so people are still looking. We're still looking for the same things, just different means to how to get the information. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, Coach 
Coach Cooley may mention it. It's just about, you know, use this time to stay at home, save some money, and improve as a hockey player. Nate, I, th I think the other piece is, too, you have the ability to re rewind. Mm -hmm. So put your best foot forward all the time. And, uh, uh, you know, because I, I was watching a game this morning, and I had a chance that you know, I was like, you know, something happened, and I wanted to just go back and check that. So mm -hmm. um, if anything, we can be a little bit pickier. Right. You know, I, I often hear coaches complain about summer hockey and, and all the recruiting that you guys have to do at showcases. I, I think we'd all like to be back to normal and, and have a normal summer, but could there be some benefits to a summer with fewer showcases? No question. I think no question. I, uh, I mean, there, there's so many, so many times in a summer you see the same player like five or six times at different events. And by the time you see him in August, they got nothing left in the tank. And that's when you should feel the best. You know, that's the, should be the beginning of your season when you have a hop in your step and just, uh, just being able to be fully refreshed before the season starts and feeling confident. And that, that's, that's the aim of a summer should be for any hockey players, any athletes for that matter. Um, so definitely take the time. If you have, you know, if you're, if you're being invited to certain tournaments you want to play with, absolutely go ahead understand that you know no one in the stands can recruit you uh you know we're sort of not looking at social media posts to see who played the best in a certain tournament we still got to trust our eyes and, and and our instincts so uh you know i wouldn't waste a lot of money going around the country trying to, to, to you know for exposure per se a lot of kids do value those chances to be seen by you guys in the summer Derek, what, what would you say to a 17-year-old who's feeling anxious because they haven't had the opportunity to be scouted or recruited this summer? I think that you've got to make sure that you, as Ben said, you've got to put your best foot forward to be prepared and be ready to go once the season starts because there will be a season. Uh, we will be playing hockey again, and we will be recruiting student-athletes. So you've got to make sure you're in the best scenario. And um, I think everybody gets anxious at some point with recruiting, whether you're at 20, whether you're 16, you've got some, some big decisions to make and you want to put your best foot forward in those, in those scenarios that you're put in. So make sure that you're ready, make sure that you, you've honed your game, make sure that you're uh, ready to, to be a, a good teammate, you're ready to compete hard and, and uh, jump back into it because uh, uh, we are going to have to make some decisions and how we're going to make those decisions probably aren't going to be the ways that we used to. We will get out to games, but I think the one thing that everybody's uh, been able to do, and, and Leon talked about it already, of re rewinding and watching, I think we're getting more and more comfortable using technology uh, to communicate, but we're going to get more and more used to using technology to watch events. So I think that uh, be prepared to start the year and be prepared to be ready to go because uh, somehow, whether it's watching a game from the middle of last year or watching a game uh, live, we're going to be able to see it play. I, I it's not like anybody's falling behind here, right? No, no one's falling behind. I think that's the biggest thing kids have to remember is you're not behind anyone else. And, uh, and I do think another point, and Derek kind of alluded to it as well, is how important you played before. And I think and, and if, if, I'm a, if I'm a player, I'm thinking kind of ahead now to next year, well, that – you know, Tuesday night game, uh, you know, if you're playing junior hockey or Wednesday night game where I didn't really have it, you know, maybe that's the last game that's on hockey TV from your, from your team from last year that we're watching. So it, it goes back to that old, you know, that old adage of, you know, you got to bring it every night. And, and, and hopefully I think our players included will value the game even more because it was taken away from a lot of players this year um, for a lot of sports, but, but certainly for our seniors and, and for a lot of uh, pretty good teams that we're going to make a run this year. So hopefully players will value the game during the season that much more this year. As we touched on earlier, there is communication allowed and, and you guys can, can hear from prospects that are interested in your schools. Ben, what, what are the types of things you hope to hear when, when a prospect reaches out to you? Uh, you know, I, I would think most coaches are inundated with, uh, with, with a lot of emails and, and some form of communication. I think it's still a good way to get a coach's attention, especially, you know, if you're playing a league that's, that's, that's reputable and you're doing well, uh, there's nothing wrong with sending a quick email. Uh, I think short and concise is what we're looking for. 
uh, you know, where you're playing, who's a coach that we can call for reference. If you're going to make a video of yourself, make it short and sweet, you know, give us a, a sense for, for, for your skill level. Um, and uh, just kind of go from there. I mean, like I said, short and sweet, we're getting a lot of emails, but, uh, and that applies for all the time. Um, but uh, that's, that's what I like to see anyway, when a, when a recruit reaches out, that's, that's what has the most impact. Derek, I imagine your answer is reach out to my assistant coaches, but uh, beyond that, what are, you, what are you looking to hear from? Well, you know, the one thing I, I will say is there's this new thing in, in all of uh, the computer and uh, uh, different programs called Spellcheck. <laughs> it's, it's also, you know, you also get a chance to see what is being sent to you and how much time they put into it. And, you know, I don't want to... Uh, uh, get a, an email that says I'm really excited about playing for the, the black bears and uh, at the end say where it says uh, go tigers you know I want to get it I, I want them to make sure that they they take the time and, and do things the right way and you know we talk about academics and we talk about all that but I think those things are, are things that uh, go a long way and uh, you know you want to make sure that you you put your best foot forward but as far as your player, but you also got it as far as your details and your habits and making sure I, I don't get a, a, an email that says, dear coach Hayward uh, really is, is something that I think the, the players, and I think we've all got them. I think we all could say that we've got that and we've all probably done it uh, ourselves. And it, if you're embarrassed, but it, um, I think you can, when you're, when you're sending emails, make sure that it's the right email. It's the right person. Uh, the details are right. And you take some time. The last thing is, that, hey, I'm really interested in your program. And that's all you get. You don't want those. So we do read them. And we do, we do get a lot of them. But we do spend a lot of time looking at that. So make sure that you put the time in and uh, you give it that kind of uh, uh, personal touch. I, just, I agree with both those. And I think it's important to know the school that you're reaching out to in the sense that, you know, if you're – reaching out to Colorado College and you're saying, I love your business program, you know, yeah, that's, that's right. We have a business economics program, but maybe you want to be a little bit more specific as you, as you reach out just so, so people, the coaching staff knows you've done a little bit of that research versus just kind of a random degree program or something like that as well. It's a great time right now for, for prospective student athletes to be able to do that kind of research. Certainly uh, no excuse not to. There, there is a, uh, even though we're in this dead period, there's a fairly significant date on the recruiting calendar coming up on, on August 1st. You can offer rising 11th graders in terms of uh, verbal commitments. I know every school is different, but uh, is that a date that carries some importance for you guys? I guess, Ben, if you want to start. It does. Uh, you know, we, we have some guys we've identified and, uh, you know, much like Leon said, we've, uh, you know, there's some guys that we've we've had a relationship with in the past that, uh, you know, since the, the January 1st deadline started when we were able to communicate with them, uh, we've tried to build that relationship. And so some of them actually have gone to major junior already. And so that's 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 gone. Uh, but, uh, no, there's definitely some guys we have our eyes on, um, much like probably a lot of schools. Um, but it's not the end all be all. If, uh, you know, August 1st, uh, your phone doesn't ring off the hook, that, does, that doesn't matter. You still can't go, to, can't go to college until you graduate from grade 12. And there's still plenty of hockey to be played and, uh, you know, to, to, to be recruited. Yeah, I think the, the one thing Ben said is we're all uh, looking at dates, but we also, um, I think the, we want the best players in college hockey. And come August 1st, I want the, the best players to, to play either at Maine or Colorado College and, and stay in the game because this is a – we've got a great sport. College hockey is the, the right way, to, the right path that we feel to, to get in an education and playing hockey and development. And uh, the phone will ring for a lot of kids, but it won't. And uh, those kids can't get depressed and start looking at other options because we will be back around and uh, there will be opportunities for you. and. Uh, some of our best players that we've got, we didn't commit until their their 20-year-old 20, 20 year. And uh, I think we've all got those stories that they were passed by numerous times and nobody could pull the trigger and they ended up being some of our, our top all-time players. So don't get uh, 
depressed and, and don't lose faith in the college process if, if uh, come August 1st, your phone isn't ringing because college hockey is the right path. And uh, it's not for everybody, but uh, if, it, if it's for you, uh, give it some time and be, have some patience. And no, not, people really aren't taking a, you gotta be patient at this time. Don't worry about what your, your teammates doing. Don't worry about what uh, your uh, competition's doing, your competitor. Take your own time, find your own path and, and forge it that way. I agree 100% uh, with that. Um, you know, I think we kids often get caught up with what other kids are doing. And, and really, once you start moving into, you know, high school and junior hockey, you got to, you know, chart your own path, even though you're on a team with, with someone else and other players, you really have to chart your own path and be and be OK with your process. And certainly August 1st is a is a is a date for us. We're excited about. But um, we also have uh, had some really good conversations as a staff that we would rather be late and miss than shoot and miss terribly. And, and I think that's really important for us in our process now. And, and we do like the fact that it slowed things down. Um, sure, we're disappointed about the kids that, that leave and go to play major junior, um, you know, because obviously we believe in this path. Um, all of us here on this call and then certainly uh, all of our staffs, but um, we'd rather be a little bit slow and, and be right than, than, be, than be quick and be wrong. So, um, you know, we definitely uh, are excited about it August 1st, but at the end of the day, like Derek said, some of the best kids that are coming into our program um, are kids that have fin just finished their third year of junior hockey, and we're really excited about them, and it's been unbelievable to watch them grow as players and people over the last three Patience is probably the, the key word that comes up in recruiting, no matter what time of year, no matter what situation, and, and really given the, the dead period and the situation we're in, it's probably more important than ever. So uh, thank you guys for, for reinforcing that. Thank you guys for taking the time. Uh, if anybody has any further questions about what recruiting in the dead period means, certainly feel free to reach out to College Hockey Inc. and we'd be happy to, uh, to answer those. But hopefully this has been, uh, been helpful. And, and I know uh, speaking on behalf of CHI, we really appreciate the three of you taking the time to do this. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us.